This video is brought to you by Squarespace, my favorite all-in-one platform to build beautiful websites and online shop. Hello, welcome to my bookbinding studio. Today I'm going to show you how to measure a hardcover case for a case-bound book. Case binding is essentially the most basic way to make a hardcover book. There are three pieces of bookboard that surround your pages, the front cover, the spine, and the back cover. Let's complete these text blocks before building the cases. These are sewn with French link stitch, and I'm lining the spine with cheesecloth and attaching end bands at the head and tail. For the front and back cover boards, start by measuring the length and width of the text block. Write these measurements down and then add a quarter inch or six millimeters to the length of the spine. This is going to add an overhang of one eighth inch or three millimeters at the head and tail. This book measures five inches or 12.7 centimeters and three and a half inches and nine centimeters at the spine. After adding the overhang spacing of a quarter inch or six millimeters, we're gonna cut two cover boards that measure five inches by three and three quarter inches or 12.7 centimeters by 9.6 centimeters. The medium book measures four and one eighth inches or 10.4 centimeters by five and a half inches or 14 centimeters at the spine. With the overhang spacing, I need to cut two cover boards that measure four and one eighth by five and three quarters inches, or 10.4 by 14.6 centimeters. The large book measures five and seven eighths by eight and three quarters inches, or 14.8 by 22.2 centimeters. So the cover boards will measure five and seven eighths by nine inches or 14.8 by 22.8 centimeters. Here's what the cover boards look like against the text blocks. Make sure all the cover boards have paper grain that run parallel to the spine. Keep the sandwich together to measure the spine piece. The width is the thickness of the text block plus both boards, and the length is the same as the covers. A note about the text blocks. Aim to make a text block that is no more than three quarter inch or two centimeters. This is because beyond that, you're risking creating spine swell, which means that the spine thickness is greater than the rest of the text block after sewing. So there are tips and tricks on managing spine swell, but if you keep your text block under three quarter inch or two centimeters, you don't have to worry about it. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an artist-friendly, small business-friendly website builder. The resources page on my website has been sitting stagnant for a while now, and I decided to give it a small refresh by adding my video links and other websites that I think would be useful for curious visitors. This took me no time at all, and I love that each time I go and do an update, there are new customizations that easily add personality to the page. It feels like Squarespace has truly designed their platform for the creator and visitor in mind. No coding skills required. Once you have a vision, you can build your dream website effortlessly. To get started, go to squarespace.com slash bittermelon for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. I thought of doing this to test the fit of the boards before adding the cover materials, 
I'm really glad I tried this because I'm going to use this technique from now on every time I design a new case-bound book. There have been numerous times in the past where I've mismeasured and only until the very end that I realize um, the cover boards are off or the text block is off. I'm using artist tape here which is usually used for painting I believe. Um, I have tried washi tape which has ripped off some of the board so unfortunately that doesn't work. So whatever tape you have just try a bit of it on the board first before you actually do the test fit. Push the text block snug into the spine. What I'm looking for is that there's an even overhang on all three sides of the pages and that the end bands are proportionate to the spine. Also check that the width of the spine is to your liking. You can go a little more narrow um, depending on what you're going for. I didn't pay attention to the width of the spine for the large book. When I got to the pressing stage, I realized that the spine is quite thick compared to the rest of the book. Note that when you add the cover material, a little bit of bulk will be added to all the sides of the covers. Now I can make book cloth to glue onto the covers. I usually measure one inch or two and a half centimeters beyond each edge for the book cloth. And then when I attach it, I will trim each edge to three quarters inch or about two centimeters. If you want to use decorative paper, I recommend looking into quarter binding, which means that the spine is covered with book cloth and then the rest of the book is covered with paper. You want a durable material at the hinge so that it doesn't wear out when you open and close the book. That's all I have for building a hardcover case. I hope you enjoyed this video and you took away some new tips and tricks on making your own case bound book. I'm going to play the casing in process unedited and sped up a little so that you can see how I did it. Okay, bye!